Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And I want to show you one of the... Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And today I want to show you one of the, if not the, best DIY lawn care tool that I've ever had the privilege of putting my hands on. I'd start over again. I still get nervous when people walking down the road looking over here at me. All right. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. And today I got a DIY tool I want to show you. And in my opinion, it might be the best or one of the best DIY tools that I've ever used. Lord have mercy. So typically this is where you would hear me or somebody else that you're watching the video say, hey, look in the description below. There's a link if you want to check this out. For the most part, when I do that, it's going to send you over to the Academy website. That's my own personal website. We manage that ourselves. And sometimes you might click that link and it'll take you to Amazon. All right, so what that is, that's an Amazon affiliate link. Here's the way that works. You go in sign up under there i think it's an associates program or something like that you fill out the things connect it to your bank account you go and pick out a product take that link apply it to a video when someone clicks on that link buys that product using your link that's attached to your account amazon would send you a little bit of money and that's kind of the way people make money using amazon is through those links well it's pretty rare for me to do that and let me explain why I have a special needs child, he's 10 years old. Uh, we live in North Carolina. Uh, if you're watching this for the first time, know this isn't a commercial. I'm, I'm a real dude, I got real skin, and I breathe real air. And my wife and I take my son to Philadelphia for surgery about twice a year, sometimes three times a year, depending on how fast he's growing. We've been doing that for nine years now, and you can imagine travel, gas, food, uh, hotel room, somewhere to stay, uh, all that kind of thing, the money adds up, it gets really expensive. Not to mention the big expense, and that is the hospital. It's bills on top of bills on top of bills. I've seen some bills come across my desk that are astronomical, cost more than my house cost. Fortunately, insurance takes care of the majority of that, but we're still left with a really big chunk to pay. Now my wife and I have been uh, extremely blessed and been able to absorb 100% of that cost ourselves. In the beginning, we weren't able to do this, but we got to a certain point where we could actually absorb all the cost, 100% of the cost, and so we take care of that. But money was still coming in, people were still wanting to help and give, so we applied that to a 5013C nonprofit organization. I think that's right, 5013C, 5031C, something like that. And now we get to take that money that people donate and give, and we take it to Philadelphia with us, and we help other families that are like us, that have children like us, but are not as fortunate and can't afford all the, the cost that's associated with it. Here's a great example. I'm so happy to better tell you this. And if you have helped us in any way, thank you very much. Thank you so much from me and my family and from my son. We're going back to Philadelphia in February. This will be surgery number 29-ish, 30, something like that. And we are going to take two checks to two families for $5,000 a piece. That's a total of $10,000 we're gonna take with us to Philly and hand them out to these two families. I want you to think about a mom and a dad, both working, uh, both have jobs, but they're struggling to make ends meet, struggling to pay their bills. And I want you to imagine them having a child that their bones are all jacked up, like my son. Then they find out they need to travel to the specialized hospital so they can get these life-saving surgeries. And they gotta figure out how to put gas in the car they got to figure out how to put food in their belly, where they're going to stay. And on top of all that, they got to figure out how to pay the hospital. Everybody don't have insurance. And some of these bills can be extreme. I mean, like 
massive, massive bills. Then imagine this dude and his wife popping in the door and saying, hey, God loves you. God's going to provide for you. Trust in him. Here's you a check for $5,000. In the name of Jesus, we want you to have it. Now, if you sit there and you tell me that will not impact a life, then I don't know what will. You understand, when you have someone physically going to another person that you don't even know, love your neighbor as yourself, I don't even know this person. So they're kind of like an outside neighbor. But we're going to love on them with money, stuff people covet and crave it every day. And we're sitting here giving it away freely. Personally, I think that's the coolest thing ever. So why'd I even say that? If, when I show you these uh, tools right here we'll use, if you want to get them for yourself, I don't have an Amazon link. I'm going to tell you the names of the tool so you'll know how to search for it. But I want you to go to smile.amazon.com. Not the regular Amazon.com. Smile.amazon.com. Then you make an account and all that kind of thing. It's no different than the normal Amazon. You get all the same prime perks and all the benefits and all that. You're just doing it under a different URL. Inside smile.amazon.com, you are going to be prompted to pick a charity. If you're already using smile.amazon and you're already supporting another charity, don't switch. We don't want you to change. We want you to keep, keep supporting that charity that you're already supporting. But if you're not and you're interested, Team Jax, I'm going to put it up on the screen down here so you can see it. We would highly appreciate it if you chose us. Now, what that's going to do is anything you buy through smile.amazon.com, I think it's 1%. So if you spend 100 bucks, Amazon sends us a dollar. I know that's not a lot. It's minuscule what they do, but it's better than nothing. And depending on how many people watch this video and depending on how many people sign up and how many things you buy from Amazon during the course of a year, that's how many people my wife and I can help. And it's not only us helping, you are a part of it as well. Say there's evil in the world. So I know people are manipulated uh, and, and controlled by money and, and stuff and possessions. Uh, it's all over the place. It's all the way from the streets to the church. But as for me and my wife goes, I give you my word on the rods that are in my son's back. Every single red cent that comes out of that smile.amazon will go straight to a family. Because like I said, we've been blessed. We're able to absorb all the financial costs involved with our son. But out of the abundance where God just keeps on providing, we're going to take that and turn that over to families that actually need it. Say, so if you've hung on this long, I appreciate you taking time to let me explain all that. Let's get to work. And as you can see, they're brand new. I have yet to take them out of the packaging. You can see these two right here are still nice and shiny, so I've yet to use them. So when I say I'm going to give you a first impression, that's exactly what I mean. This one right here is a pro plugger. The one right here with a square end is called a yard butler. And then this other one right here is called a Chuma, C-H-U-M-A-A, -A, bulb planter, weeder, sod remover. So you can probably find a few different uses for this, but the way I'm going to use it today is over in my bluegrass. I've got a couple of large bare areas that, yeah, they'll probably fill in over time, but I have some extra bluegrass around the edges where grassy kind of fell over in the beds and that kind of thing and it's actually grown and matured and got really thick and nice so i'm gonna rob peter to pay paul and i'm gonna go over here and steal some from over there and put it over here now will this work with tall fescue i don't know we'll have to do that on its own video fescue's not a spreading type turf so i'm not completely sure about the whole size this thing removes, if the fescue will fill it up or not, that's something I'll have to play around with. We'll do that in another video. But for this video, if you have a spreading type turf, like bluegrass, like zoysia, Bermuda, I cannot speak for St. Augustine, and I, I can't speak for centipede, and I can't speak for, what's that other one, Paspellum or whatever that stuff's called, I don't know. Buffalo grass, I don't know, because I don't grow those. I can speak for zoysia, 
Kentucky bluegrass and Bermuda grass because I do grow those here locally. And yes, this tool will work like a champion for all three of those. So if we come over here, this is kind of the lowest area in the yard. So when I had some washing and that kind of thing, the seed kind of washed over here against the fence. And you see the line of my fescue right here. So if we draw a line about right there, from here over is gonna be natural area pine needles. And on this side of the orange line is gonna be my actual yard. So all this grass is grass that I'll either have to dig out, round up and kill it, or just do away with it. But instead, I'm gonna use it and transplant it in my bare areas. All right, so. neighbor got the dogs inside so that's uh let's do this one first this is a yard butler you see it's got a square uh tube like area here and then it has this handle on it where you can push the the sod out get two uh, nice little foot things where you can use your foot to push down on it And you can see it comes out with a nice little chunk of sod. See how the handle is sticking out now? I'm just gonna mash this handle down. Whoa! That is <laughs> oh, really, really tight. And you can see what we come up with. That is drop dead gorgeous. I'm not gonna lie to you. That looks really good. Nice roots too, look at there. That's about two inches of ground, and I've got roots sticking out of the bottom. And when I look in my hole down here in the, the bottom, I can see roots still in there. So uh, I'd be curious to see how deep these roots go. So extraction with the yard butler, fairly easy. It was a little bit hard to mash this, and that's probably got to do with the ground being really wet right now. All right, number two, this is the Chuma bulb planter. Uh, same thing, it's got a mechanism where you can push the side out and then it's also got a little foot pedestal right here. Alright, so this one I see when you, when you take it out you're going to want to give it a little twist because it's got this little opening right here. Now that could have been because I've done it so close to my other hole. We'll, we'll do another one to be sure. But then this one, you probably want to take your foot and mash it out. Let's give this another try over here by itself. Yeah. See how when I pull that straight up, it leaves that little bit right there. And the thing is, you're going to go use this same tool to dig a hole to put this side in. So you want that circle to be really nice and clean. Now let's do the Pro Plugger. Now one really cool thing about this is you get these two rings that you can actually slide on the end. And you can gauge your depth. So if I only want to go this deep, I use this ring. If I want to go a little deeper, I use this ring. Let's use this ring right here so that the depth matches up with the other two. All right, so that one's in. Now, I actually don't have a way to get this back out this way. You actually have to push in on it a little bit and watch. It comes out the other end like that. That's nice and neat and clean. And then here's the roots on the other one. Look at these roots right here. This is about four inches deep. And that, that root right there is uh, hanging down about an inch. So already this, this turf right here is less than six months old. And I've already got six inch deep roots. Now the other two I cannot do this with. I know I can do it with this one. I can take multiple plugs at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while I'm over here.
Now let's look at the holes up close. Here's the square hole right here. Here's the chupa hole. Is that the way you say that? Chuma. Here's the chuma hole right here. It's a round circle. And then here's the plug R hole right here. Much less noticeable. Now I do have to say this about the plug R. This is a very big advantage. Watch this. Look at all the plugs I got out of one tube. That is really cool. Whereas with these two, you get to pull one plug and then you have to empty it, pull another one, empty it, pull another one, and so on. So you can see I got a pretty decent sized bare spot right here. And I'm gonna go back with the yard butler first. You can see that ground's pretty hard too. You wouldn't think it would be that hard as much rain as we've had holy cow now let's try another spot that's too hard oh my gosh holy cow All right, let's try the other ones. Come back right here beside this one. Too hard for that one too. This video may end up being a flop. Oh my goodness. Oh. Alright. So the plug R is able to penetrate the hard stuff and I pulled out some dirt This may be telling me why no grass is growing here. All right, so here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna drop that down in there, like that. Now, I definitely don't wanna leave that. See how that's loose, like that right there? I'm gonna just take my knife, screwdriver, small shovel, something like that. I'm gonna go in here beside all this, around the outside edge. Kind of work that ground back toward the root ball. Then I can kind of give it a little tamp. That's crazy that this ground right here is this flipping hard. I'll have to spend a little extra time on this to soften it up. Well, that looks good. Now I would, all I would do is repeat this process over this whole area. Let me show you a way that I think might be easier to do this. So let's take the yard butler that it was so hard to do it with and let's mark out our area. Incredibly hard now this 
obviously has to do with this ground. If you had a small tiller and you tilled up this little bitty area and then used this tool, it would work great. But for hard ground, it ain't worth two cents. You can see I couldn't even get down as low so that the root ball's even. So I'm gonna take this and shave a little bit off the bottom. Try that. There we go. And you can see when I move about, I don't know, five or six foot over. Look how much easier this ground is to work. Then you just come right in here with your turf and drop them in a hole. Just so it don't look like I'm throwing these other two under the bus. I mean, I have no affiliation with none of them. I'm gonna come over here to some softer ground. And you can see it does pretty good. Now, this is a downfall of that one. It is extremely hard to push that out. But again, I think that's where that ground's pretty moist. And here's my chunk that I took out from over there. And look at that. That is really nice. Again, I'm going to take my knife and kind of work the ground just a little bit around it. That way it'll kind of seat good against the walls. Give it a little tap. That's a done deal. And to be completely fair to the other one, let's try it over here on some soft ground. And it's still a little bit difficult. You have to kind of work it around a little bit like that. Give it a little twist. And that come out pretty good. And take my plug, put it in the hole. Work the ground a little bit around it. And there you go. So another cool way you could use this is, is let's say you've got some bare spots in the yard and you've got a nice thick dense stand of turf in other places you can actually take it out of the yard as well there you go now if I were doing it this way I would come back to this little hole and fill it back in with a little bit of dirt because this is Kentucky bluegrass and no bigger than that is that'll spread and fill in at springtime So again, I don't have any affiliation with any of these things. Uh, if I had to pick one uh, based off almost 20 years of growing turf and using all kind of equipment, I think the Pro Plugger is probably going to be my favorite. If it has a downfall compared to the other two, it's that the hole is a little bit smaller, so you're going to pull out smaller plugs. That means if you've got a larger bare area, it's going to take more plugs to fill it in. The upside to it being smaller is that it's easier to push in the ground. There's not as much surface area right here that you have to penetrate the ground with. It is by far the easiest one to use. I do like it that you have two different depth options you can go with. And my favorite thing about it is I can fill this whole tube up with plugs. I don't have to plug empty, plug empty, plug empty. I can probably get about eight plugs in here, which makes it kind of convenient if you're filling in a larger bare area because you can get a lot of work done in a little bit of time. So while I'm out here, I'm going to go ahead and film a video on some POA annual I got out here. And I'm going to use this thing to remove it. So be looking for that video here real soon. And please do not forget. So if you want to support me and my wife so that we can go support these families financially, to help pay their doctor bills, travels, and all that kind of thing, please use smile.amazon. Make sure you pick out Team Jacks for the charity. My wife and I will be extremely grateful to you for that.
So hey, as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.